Welcome back everyone, I'm Dawn. Today is my 40th birthday and this is Let's Make It 40K. Okay, so today we are going to be making easy to build faction themed dice trays. Now, I initially wanted to do an actual game piece for this upload, but after I started using my own dice trays in mock games, with my daughter, I was inundated with requests for custom trays. Now, it took me a couple years to settle on a specified 40K group of players that I wanted to regularly play with. Um, and so I did at no charge to them fill those requests for my new friends. But requests kept coming and I'm not one to deny anyone something cool that they want. However, I am not in the business of manufacturing dice trays. I would much rather just show you guys how I did it so that you can make your own. Uh, one more quick note, the difficulty level of this project corresponds to the level of detail you want to put in. You can opt for a one-tone or a two-tone version and keep it simple, or up the ante with a three-tone version, giving yourself a greater challenge. With that said, let's get started. So first you're going to want to hunt down the faction emblem you want to use on the internet. You may have to use editing software to resize your emblem so that it fills the bottom of the size of the tray you choose to do this with. The bigger the tray you choose, the more work you create for yourself. I went with one inch deep trays that were roughly six inches wide by nine inches long, which you can find in your local crafting uh, store. You're not going to be able to find uh, the materials you need for this project in your standard tabletop gaming focused hobby shop. So it will have to be a crafting shop specifically that you go to. Now once you've determined the size of the image you want, you're going to want to have it printed and I would suggest using an office supply company for this if you don't already have access to a good quality printer so that you get a good quality print it would probably be a good idea to print a few copies of varying sizes in case you made a mistake in your calculations. You don't want to be making multiple trips to the copy store is the reason why. Now you'll need to procure your materials. At, at the same crafting store you can get the box you'll use as the base for your tray. You'll also want to grab a few sheets of felt that correspond with the colors of your preferred faction. You should already have the colors of paint you need for this if you've already embarked on the long journey of painting your army. However, you'll also want to pick up the corresponding paint colors as well if you don't have enough to cover a large area. You'll also need good quality scissors, a metal ruler, a flat cutting surface, and PVA. So you're going to want to start by cutting the emblem out and test fit it in your tray. Once you're content with what you've got, put it aside and start getting layers of paint on the bottom of the tray itself. Much like painting a Citadel model, you'll want to work in thin layers until you've built up a solid color. It will be a good idea to paint the inner and outer corners of your second or first tones so that any mistakes in the upcoming felt work you do are obscured. You may need to paint the entirety of the walls of your tray as well should you opt for a more complex design like the Zinch tray that we're working once your paint has dried, it's time to start cutting and installing the felt. So you're going to start by measuring the inner and outer dimensions of your tray and use the outer dimensions of, for the overall length of your cuts. Measure the height of your inner wall and make a vertical cut at the length of the inner edges of your felt. These cuts should be started coming in from the edge at the same thickness of the tray wall. So from the height of that cut, you'll make a 45 degree angle cut outward towards the edge of the felt. It's okay to eyeball this if you make a mistake, the paint that you laid down on the corners earlier will compensate for that. You should now have your piece ready to glue and install. Lay down a layer of heavy PVA glue to your felt and the surface it's being glued to and use a ruler to press it in place firmly, wiping away excess glue. You may wish to glue one side of the tray wall at a time, and then rinse and repeat with the other glue walls. 
we'll come back here later to this step for the more complicated versions. Now you'll need to work quickly here as the glue can dry out fast if you're not careful. After cutting out your emblem, lay down a razor thin layer of PVA glue to the back of it, spreading it thin with your finger or card. Flip the emblem over and carefully place it in the center of your tray, spreading it out gently but quickly so as to not let the glue dry out. If you place too much glue on the paper, you'll wind up with horrible wrinkles and you might even tear the paper in the process. So you want to be careful with how much glue you put down on the paper. But again, you have to be quick about getting it in salt. Finally, our tray is starting to come to life and we're on the home stretch, but we need one final touch and that's a felt emblem for the outside of the tray. This does not apply to the more complicated designs, but this part can be a challenge if you're, if, you know, unless you're doing more so. You can call it good here if you like, but the felt iconography is a fun little touch and I think it's worth the extra effort. I pre-handed the cuts for these trays, so there's little instruction I can give you short of demonstrating the cuts here. Um, but obviously the orcs won't be much of a challenge as you can use a hole puncher for one of the eyes. Um, and then it's orange, so it's kind of hard to mess that up. Um, and it is no big deal if you mess up and have to start over a few times until you're happy with your cuts, as you're using very little felt for this part and there's less area to cut. So once your emblems are ready, like we did when we installed the walls, we'll want to glue felt on the tray where the emblem will go and the back of the emblem itself. Press it on let it dry and you might have to come back after everything has dried and add more glue to pieces that didn't secure down the first time but the second application of glue will be more effective so it won't be much maintenance after that and that's it for the easy one two-tone versions for the more complicated versions this is where you'll need to let your creativity fly although I may have more inspiration for you down the road for the Iron Warriors tray, I went with a 45 degree uh, placement of hazard stripes, which was definitely more taxing. For my daughter's Necron tray, it was just a matter of cutting straight lines in the felt corresponding with the design on the emblem, as well as some random cuts in the sides. But again, more taxing. The Zinch tray was made in chaos with little direction as it is chaos, so completely at random and random in design and build. Ultimately, the design you go with is up to you, and so are the materials you use. You don't have to use felt at all. You can even put pieces from your bits box to work. And there you have it. Um, simple faction themed dice trays. Of course, I had the luxury of putting mine to work in my first official games of Warhammer 40K this weekend to celebrate my birthday. And for my first few battles, while my Thunderhawk laid the smack down on my buddy uh, Mike's Hierophant, ultimately he put out more damage than I could keep up with before taking him down. So, interestingly enough, after that, a league player had come up and challenged me to a league game learning experience uh, against 2,000 points of his death watch. So I fielded the Thunderhawk again. And while, yet again, I lost my third game uh, with points, I almost tabled his melee-based, mostly infantry, Death Watch army with the bolters of the Thunderhawk. And on that note, while the Thunderhawk may need some points adjustments, it's definitely deadly in the hands of Imperial Fists due to the excess of bolter round attacks it has. So thanks for watching guys, as you can see this channel is still rather new and I can use all the help I can get in spreading the good word of the improv. So whatever you guys can do to help is appreciated, like, share, sub, bell, and let me know what you think or plan to do with your trays. And if I've inspired you and you want to share a picture of your dice tray build here on this channel, I would love to see and share what you guys wind up doing.
Okay, that'll wrap it up for now. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next week with a build that you can use in actual gameplay. I'm Don, this has been Let's Make It 40K, and now you can build a dice tray that matches your faction. See you next week.